Hi, I'm John Pettuccino, Professor of Astronomy at College of the Redwoods. This YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class, from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. The geocentrism was the rule of the road for well over a thousand years, yet as we know today, it was totally incorrect. The foundation for this started to crumble with a guy by the name of Copernicus, who published his work in 1543. Uh, his work centered around an understanding that the sun was the center of the solar system. He didn't speak to what was beyond the sun, he didn't know our solar system orbited in a galaxy and whatnot. He placed the sun at the center, and he placed planets orbiting around the sun, with the earth being the third planet to orbit the sun, and things like the moon orbiting the earth. So it's important to note that not everything orbited the sun. The moon orbited the earth. Did you know why? No, that would take Newton and an understanding of gravity, and that would come well over a century later. But by 1543, Copernicus was ready to publish his work that in fact heliocentrism was the rule of the road. Heliocentrism, the same root as helium, an element found in the sun. So heliocentrism is his published work in 1543, in fact the same year Copernicus died. Not because of persecution, but he knew that there would be trouble when he released this information. What convinced Copernicus that heliocentrism was right? After all, the telescope had yet to be invented. It wouldn't be for another hundred years that Galileo, maybe seventy years, that Galileo would be ready to use the telescope with others to prove that heliocentrism totally demoted geocentrism. What he looked at was, he looked at planets, and he knew the motion of planets in the sky should be, by all rights, uh, on these spheres, nested inside the spheres. So here's the Earth, here's the Moon orbiting around, and he knew that different planets should move not around the Earth, but around the Sun. What convinced him of this? In the geocentric model, planets move on their own spheres, one nested inside another. Sounds good. What he recognized as he began to look at these things is, they from time to time actually stopped their motion and reversed their direction. So in fact, what Copernicus noted was that a planet's motion looked more like this from week to week and month to month. There was a time when the planet was actually traveling backwards. So the motion of the planet was not a simple sphere in the sky, but almost a loop-de-loop -loop pattern. This was known as retrograde motion. Again, the word retrograde means reversed direction. Now, how does heliocentrism explain this? Rather simply, in fact, if you take a planet like the Earth, and you take another planet like Mars out beyond the Earth, because these planets orbit the Sun at different distances, they travel at different speeds. The closer you are to the body, the faster you travel. So the Earth travels around the Sun at a much higher speed than does Mars. So simply put, as the Earth passes Mars on the inside, it makes Mars look like it's moving backwards. Retrograde motion. Just like passing a car on the highway, if you just perceive the car out of the corner of your eye, it looks as if that car is moving backwards, when in fact you're both, of course, moving forward. The only way to explain this is to put the sun at the center and to put the planets in different motions, in different speeds, around the sun. So the Earth passes Mars on the inside and creates that retrograde motion. That, without the aid of a telescope, was enough to convince Copernicus that in fact the geocentric model didn't work. For the reasons that we outlined in previous discussions, that was not enough to weaken the cement of geocentrism. It would take others, like Galileo, and others like Kepler and Newton, to convince the general population and scientists as a whole that in fact the heliocentric model was the better model. We'll discuss what Galileo found 